What you sitting there trying to say is basically the law is done away with. That's a Christian mentality. That's what the Christians say. They say the law is done away with. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. And now we got crime throughout the whole community. Now our men are knocking up our women and not marrying them. Now, hey, now we got homosexuals marrying men, marrying men, when women marrying women. Cause why? The pastors told them that they saved by the blood of Jesus and they don't have to keep none of God's laws. Now God got a problem with that. Now we got people that don't won't even read the word of God and will come up and speak against the prophets of God as if no punishment will come upon them for running their mouths. When we come straight out the Bible and we've been told we lying. Have you seen us not come out the Bible yet? They say they took crafty counsel. Read. They took crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Let the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to separate us from our God. You understand? And so when the white man came into power, the white man got our book and went through this Bible and started reading it to find out how to destroy the children of God. Give me Deuteronomy 4.27. These are some of the things that happened to us for forsaking God, for not following God's laws. This is the punishment that we're going through. All the things that we're going through in these ghettos, the things that we're going through in these streets, all these things are curses that God put on upon us for breaking his laws. Matter of fact, give me start at Deuteronomy 1 and 1. This, this, this to make sure that everybody understands that this Bible is not a book for all people. This Bible is only about the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. This is our history book. This is not a universal book for all nations. God, Christ didn't come here for all nations. Christ came here for his people, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spoke unto all Israel. So I'm just establishing the fact that Moses was speaking to the children of Israel. Give me verse, uh, go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1. So we just establishing the fact that this Bible is, who is Moses speaking to? All Israel, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We gotta keep dwelling that in our people here so that our people can understand that they are the Israelites. That they are God's chosen people. And when you're God's chosen people, you can't just walk around the earth doing what you want to do. But think about this right here. Do you have any kids? Hey, should your kids represent your name? Should they be doing things to make you proud? Well, God gave us things so we could be so he could be proud of us. So we could walk in righteousness. They are called laws, statutes, and commandments. Read verse one. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. That's what God, God gave us laws and commandments. He said, if you observe and do all my commandments that I give you, read. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Let's do what? Set thee on high. No, equal. It's on high above all nations of the earth. He said he would set us on high above all nations of the earth. That's, right. That's rulership. That's right. God gave us rulership on this earth. All we had to do was be obedient to him. You understand? 
And you know what those 17 other nations felt? I'm going to show you what they felt. Give me verse 10. No, it's not cut. This no, is the book of Deuteronomy, like, chapter 28, and, and verse 10. Like and and all is. people on the earth the shall see that the thou court. art called by the name of the Lord, the and they shall be afraid of thee. That's what happened. When they saw that we was keeping God's laws and commandments, the other nations feared the Israelites because they understood that God fought for us. That's how God delivered us out of Egypt. That's recorded in the Bible because the fear of God went throughout the whole earth. Because what? Egypt was what? Ruling the earth. And God went in with one man in a stick and took down the whole nation. That's right. And delivered his children out of captivity. That's right. You understand? So the, all these nations feared us. The problem was that his children, we didn't fear him. That's the problem. We still don't fear him now. That's why we out here selling dope to one another, killing one another, oppressing one another. That's why we doing all these things. We out here turning our women into hoes. You know what I'm saying? Making them baby mamas. That's right. We out here doing all the things to get ourselves locked up. How can we protect our families if our men are in jail? Bring it out. You understand? This is all these things are happening because we we don't fear God and we don't have love for one another. We don't have respect for one another. Give me verse 15. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass. If thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses are, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said he was going to put curses upon our people, and these curses would overtake us. You understand? So give me verse 47. Okay, and verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So these curses would be on our people for a sign and for a wonder. Read. And upon thy seed forever. He said the curses would be upon our people forever. I'm glad you got your Bible, bro. That's something that our people need to do. Oh. First, walk around with that Bible. And two, when we actually reading it, read along with us. That way you don't think we just making things up. So, so now that you got your Bible, now guess what? Guess what? Now I want you to start doing what that Bible say. You understand? I'm going to show you something you was doing right quick. Hold that right, right there and give me Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. I'm going to show you what you was doing that was so disrespectful earlier. All right? Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear. So when you come up amongst the prophets, bro, he said be more ready to hear. Then to give the, uh, the sacrifice of fools. Because when you acting foolish, doing all that talking, you understand? You don't realize that you're doing evil. So God said, keep your foot, mean close your mouth, be more ready to hear. You was doing all that talking, and the whole time you was completely wrong, completely off. God ain't speaking to you. God ain't speaking to you. Let me tell you who somebody been speaking to you. It was Satan. God speak to you through these words of God, through this Bible. That's how he speak to you. And I'm going to prove that. Give me Hosea 5.15. This is how God... This is what God said. I want you, remember, you said you believe in this book. Go to Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. But, but go, go, go to Hosea 5 and 15. Right. You do not have understanding. Because if you did, remember, you would have kept your mouth closed when you came up here amongst the prophets. Watch this. Right. Right. And are we reading from the Bible? Watch this. Are we reading from the Bible? Yes or no? Read. So you don't, so you hate, you hate God. You show me you hate God. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15 I will go and return to my place so they acknowledge their offense till they acknowledge their offense till they acknowledge the sin they're in you understand and when you can't acknowledge the, uh, the words of God you know you in sin when you can't acknowledge the word of God you ought to know that God ain't dealing with you you understand read and seek my face and when they do what and seek my face and their affliction they will seek me early. He said in their affliction, they're going to seek us early. So, so our people haven't been seeking God. You know why they hadn't been seeking God? Because that Bible been closed sitting in their house. That Bible been closed collecting dust. If our, if our people were seeking God right now, you know what they would do? 
they will keep their mouth shut while the prophets are reading out of the word of God. Our people would come up here to hear the word of God. God sent his prophets out just like in the days of old. Guess what? He's sending the prophets out right now to do what? To tell them, thus saith the Lord. Give me Isaiah 15, 1. Jesus Christ died for our sins. I'm a, bro, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ didn't Christ. die so you can stay in your sin. No, God said deliver. God uh, said, oh God, you, read. You, you find, find this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, me, verse 1. Who, what am I doing? Am I reading out this Bible or am I giving uh, my own words? Read. Cry aloud. God said, cry aloud, spare not. God said, don't spare nobody's feelings. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Hey, this microphone, this speaker is loud like a trumpet. Read. And show my people and show my people their transgression. What do God want us to do? And show my people their transgression. What do God want our people to do? And show my people their transgression. He wants us to show them their sins. Read. And the house of Jacob their sins. He wants us to show you your sins so you can turn away from your sins. He wants to show you the wrong that you're doing so you can turn away from the wrong you're doing. Give me Romans 6 and 23. The reason why he wants us to do these things because there's a price for sin. What is the price for sin? Right. What is the price for sin? Hell, hell. I'm going to show you what the price for sin is. This is the book. You in hell right now. Read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. Now I'm going to ask you one simple question. Do you know what sin is, brother? Jesus Christ died for our sin. Ain't no death for us. I believe in Jesus Christ. We're reading this in the book of Romans. After Christ was dead. After Christ had died and resurrected. It said the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. So what is sin? We good. We good. We good. We good. Transgressing the uh, commandments. Uh, correct. Correct. You know what verse that is? God. God. All right. We got you. Right here. First John uh, chapter three verse four. This is the book of First John chapter three and verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So whoever commits sin transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the breaking of God's laws. So God, Christ didn't, Christ didn't give you the right to kill. Christ didn't give you the right to steal. First John three and four. So how do you love? How do you supposed to love God? Love your son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm gonna show you according to what the Bible say. You, why did you put the Bible back up? Why, why did you put the Bible back up? God said, "Don't argue." He won't. He don't. You doing all the damn running your mouth? No, we reading out of the Bible, and you steady coming against the Word of God. I asked you something simple: How do you love God? How do you love God, brother? You ain't God, can't dominate. That's why. That's how are you supposed to love Jesus? You supposed to love Jesus all your heart. Let's see what Jesus said. Did Jesus say he loves him with all his heart? Well, let's find out what, he's actually, what he actually said. Give me John 14, 15. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, Jesus said what? If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said if you love him, keep the commandments. You just said that the commandments were done away with. Jesus said if you love me, keep the commandments. Read it again. If you love me, he said if you love me, keep my commandments. And if the commandments was in your heart, when he told you when you come into the house of God, hey, keep your mouth shut and be more ready to hear. If you love God, you would have followed that commandment. But you don't love him. It's very simple. This man trying to hear the word of God. He still got his Bible out. He's trying to learn. You, you being the devil that the Bible speak of. Watch this. Let me give you that. Give me that more. I'm going to show you that you being the devil. I'm going to show you that you the devil right now. Right now. I'm going to show you. Watch this. I love God and Jesus. You the devil. God said be on the same page with the This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 14. The sword soweth the word. See, we sowing the word right now. We're giving the word of God. We sowing the word. You don't have your Bible out. You're not sowing the word. We actually reading the Bible. Read. And these are they by the wayside. And this is this brother by the wayside. He by the wayside. Read. Where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. What happened to, what is the little brother doing? 
No, Satan cometh immediately. He coming immediately to do what? And take away the word you, you that was sown in their hearts. You trying to take away the word that's sown in this man's heart. You steady talking while the Bible is coming out. You steady speaking over the word of God. You ain't stopped running that mouth yet. You still ain't stopped running that mouth. You still acting like a female up here running that mouth. When you gonna start acting like a man? A man don't do all that damn talking. When you gonna be quiet, brother? Let the word of God speak. You now I know why you can't because Satan got control of your mouth. That's why you can't because you hate the word of God. Give me first John 5 and 3. This is the love of God. This is how you show God you love him. Read. This is the book of first John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. That we do what? And we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. So you understand that loving God is actually keeping the commandments, right? And you understand that sin is the breaking of the commandments, right? So, hey, I'm going to give you a law right now that you do. Give me that First Corinthians. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor his head. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is who? Christ, right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of woman is the man, right? Ain't no 50-50. Ain't no the man is the head. You believe in that? All praise him. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God, right? So that's the order of things. You have God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. That's the righteous order, right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying. Every man praying or prophesying. Right now we're prophesying. You understand? We're coming out of the word of God, right? Read. Having his head covered. And you got your head covered while the word is coming out. Dishonoreth his head. So who are you dishonoring by having your head covered? Well, I ain't prophesying. Uh, but you're hearing the word of God, right? I'm hearing the word of God. That's, that's what it means to be prophesying. So when you go to church, they tell you what? Take off your what? Guess what? This is church right now. Amen. So, so, so. It also says you keep on reading, man shouldn't have long hair. Right. But that's like, if you had it like a woman. Are you going to, are you going to walk away no, and stop listening. hearing? No, no, watch it. Okay. I, I saw you hearing that way. No, nah, I'm, I'm just listening. But, but, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, I'm reading the scripture for him. Right, right. I'm going to give you what prophesying means. Give me that in Revelations. I'm going to show you. 19 and 10. Right. I'm glad you know. So you know, but you still don't want to keep that law. Huh? Hey, I'll, I'll come here <laughs> for you, brother. I'll hey, hey, but guess what? Yeah. Remember, watch, watch this. You were listening to learn to do what? I just, I just no, got no, I'm out. asking. I just got I, I, hey, trust me, we out here. It is cold. It's cold, we out here. I ain't got no hair. Look, look at him. I ain't got no hair. Look at him. Hey, hey bro. Hey. Listen, we ain't going to die. I'm, 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 I'm watching. Watch. Hey, hey, check this out. We're not going to die, bro. Watch this, read. Yeah. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10. Yeah. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am the fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. That's what it means to prophesy, giving the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we just gave the order of Christ to tell you that, hey, he's your head. So we are prophesying. And so go back to go back to that again. Four. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor his head. You know, if I know I wanted to get into the kingdom, how long have you known that you was an Israelite? I've been knowing I was a believer for a while. I mean, how long? Huh? Probably about 20-something years. 20-something years. Now, from 20-something years, let me ask you, have you been fellowshipping for 20-something years? On and off for 20-something. Where you been fellowshipping at? Different place. I've been fellowshipping, like, with y'all. No, no, I mean congregating. Uh, two or three together in the language. No, that's not congregating, brother. Yes, that's yes. not congregating. Listen, not. listen. Check this out. Congregation is a holy convocation. You know what a holy con convocation is? No, 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 no. Give me that. Give me that in, uh, uh, what is that, Leviticus 23? Yeah, give me that. I'm going to show you what a holy convocation is. A holy convocation is a gathering of the people. It's a gathering of the people. Read. 
Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even You'll proclaim the what? And to a holy convocation. Mm -hmm. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So the Sabbath day is a holy convocation of God. That's a gathering of the body. You understand? That's when you're supposed to come together in fellowship. Give me Hebrews 10 and 25. So much just to remember, we're supposed to go what precept upon precept. Right, you said you line. right. You said you've been reading now. You've been studying for 25 years. So think about that right there. The reason why you don't have a real good understanding of the Bible, the reason why you would keep that head on your head, is because you don't keep the commandments. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. Not what? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. Said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. Read together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another we're supposed to be exhorting one another to do what to keep god's commandments to walk in righteousness read and so much more as he the day approaching and so much more as you see we in the last days you see that we're coming to the end right so we should be definitely start keeping these laws and commandments we should be repenting from our sins if you found out that hey Wearing that hat is a sin. Why the word coming out? You should take it off. If you find out that, you know what, I should be keeping the Sabbath day and fellowshipping, hey, you start. You need to start keeping the Sabbath day. I, I see other laws I can see that you're not keeping right outside of just having your hat covered and not fellowshipping. You understand? Continue reading. Verse 26. For if we sin willfully, if we sin willingly, Read. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. After you receive the knowledge of the truth, that you should take that hat off your head, that you should keep the Sabbath. Read. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There remain what? No more sacrifice for sin. There remain no more sacrifice for sin. What does that mean? You said after you have known the word of God. Right. There remain no more sacrifice for sin. Right. Who died for our sin? So when it said there's no more sacrifice for our sin, what it mean right there? There's no more sacrifice for sin. That means if you continue in willfully doing sin, you, you fall from grace. Right. That means Christ ain't with you no more. That's right. Right. Because remember, he said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. What's the opposite yeah, of love? Well, the opposite what's the, of love can be hate. Right. And what's the opposite of doing the commandments? opposite of doing is not good. Right. So guess what? When you're not doing it, yeah. you're showing hatred yeah. for God. That's what you're doing. Yeah. First John 2 and 3. Because you got to understand, hey, this is nothing but love. We're supposed to correct our brothers. How are you supposed to correct your brothers? When you see them in the midst of sin, you're supposed to do what? Well, the, the, the Bible says how you correct the brother, you go to that brother you know, one-on-one. -on -one That's if that brother sinned against you. That's what I'm talking about. But right. I ain't know. No, no. That's if that brother only, sinned against only you. Only an elder get rebuked openly. Really? Watch this. Go, go to Leviticus 19 and 17. Yeah. That, ain't, that ain't true. Yeah. Right. Listen. Keep in mind. It's just, we just read a scripture that said, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice, and show my people their transgressions. So guess what? <laughs> what do we think we're going to be doing? Showing them their sins. Watch this. Read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So God said we don't supposed to hate our brother in our heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. God said we're supposed to rebuke our neighbor. He said you shall not any wise. He said, no, you know, no, but watch this. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt in any wise. And it means well, rebuke me. Oh, go to Leviticus 19 and 17. And remember, he said, don't hate your brother. So he said, watch this. It's telling you you're supposed to correct your brother. That's what rebuke means to correct. Read. And, so, and not suffer sin upon him. So what that mean? Not suffer sin upon him. You had 19 and 17. I'm talking about what you mean when you said you shall not. That was 19 and 17. Read again from the top. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So we don't supposed to hate our brother in our heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. We're supposed to correct thy neighbor. Read. 
and not suffer sin upon them. So when our brothers in sin, we're supposed to correct him. That's what love thy neighbor means. When you see your brother in sin, you're supposed to correct your brother because the wages of sin is what? Death. We don't want our brothers to what? Die. So guess what? That's what we do. So when you love your brother, you got to correct your brother. That's right. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So we don't supposed to bear any grudge against the children of our people. So when our people hear correction, you know what? We should take that because that's love from our brothers. That's you know right. Give me Numbers 15 and 38. So we got to understand that the Bible is telling us to correct our brothers when they're in sin. You understand? And so like, that's why I told you about your hat. That's why I was telling you about, hey, we got to keep the Sabbath. It's a holy convocation. You know, the new moons, the feast days, all those are holy convocations. Bring it out. You understand? Think about it. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be practicing the righteous acts. In the scriptures, they kept the Sabbath. They didn't sit there and sit at home. They actually went to the where? To the synagogues and kept the Sabbath. Ain't that what Christ did? Did Christ go to the synagogues and keep the Sabbath? He, kept the, uh, he went to the Sabbath he was, he was born up under the law. And then we still born under the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Yeah, what end of what law? Christ is the end of the law. For of what law? The, the law don't make you righteous. Watch this, watch this, watch this. The first commandment is what? Well, we understand. Right? What? Hold on, hold on. Because that's the law. What's yeah. the first commandment? You tell me, that. Love God. Okay. So he ended that? No, what I'm saying is, ah. listen, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we talking now. So nah, nah, just, nah. Just pay attention. Just pay I'm, just pay I'm attention. Gonna show, I, I already know what you're saying, yeah. but you the don't Bible, really understand what you're saying. The Bible right. said Christ <laughs> is the end of the law. And I asked you <laughs> what law? Because what was, wait, before, law, listen, no, 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 no. I'm going to explain it to okay, you. You, you, you got to explain so you can talk right. over I'm just going to explain it to you because I know you're wrong. Well, think about it. I just, think about this right here. End of the law for righteousness. It's not righteous not to love God? Listen, listen, I'm asking you, so, answer that question. Is it righteous to love God? Listen, 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 brother, yes or no? Listen, 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 listen. Listen, 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 listen what I'm saying. I'm listening to you. Yeah, but I know you're wrong. I'm finished actually listen proving. Listen what I'm saying. The Bible said the animal sacrifices the, in, the, in the Old Testament, which you mostly It's the end of that law. law. That's right. You had the sacrifice something to be back right well when i asked you what but, uh, but when i but asked you, you why you did you no you talking, talking no bro wrong. you didn't give the answer well i'm great you couldn't think I, of it could you no i it ain't no thing <laughs> of it. It ain't no it's thing just a simple and sacrificial hey. law i asked you what law hey. how many types of laws are there I mean, we ain't, we ain't no debate. No, I'm asking you a question. You, you, keep in mind, you've been studying for 20-something years, remember? So right. I'm asking you, how many types of laws are there? There's, there's, there's a lot of laws. No, it's types, types. I'm going to give you a purpose. I'm going to give it to you. You have ceremonial laws. You have uh, civil laws. You have uh, sacrificial laws. You have uh, dietary laws. Because what was done away with was the sacrificial law. That's, that's right. was that's that was the said. yeah. But when I asked you what I, law, you kept no, 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 but you kept you no, 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 no. You kept repeating the same thing. Well, did did you not? Well, I'm gonna tell you that, but you kept on jumping. So 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 so, so do we still have to keep the law? We got to keep the law. Right. right. The only the law is for the law is for Christ. I don't have to do no law to be righteous. Christ is my righteousness. What is righteousness so, according so to the Bible? Listen, listen, listen. Hold listen, on, hold on. Listen. I'm asking you a question. You, now watch this. The you made a statement. For righteousness is watch right. this. I'm going to show you something. Justified. First, first yes. before you do anything, give me first Peter 4 and 11. I'm going to show you something. See, the difference is, Brett, I know that you don't understand the scriptures. Do you believe in the Bible? Before, before you get that, yeah, go ahead and get that. First Peter 4 and 11. This is the book of First Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So if any man speak, don't give an answer saying what God said they supposed to do what? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Let him speak as the oracles of God. He's supposed to be coming out this Bible. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. And tell me if you believe in this scripture right here. Bring it out. Because you remember, what you what you sitting here trying to say is basically the law is done away with. That's a Christian mentality. That's what the Christians say. They say the law is done away with. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. 
and now we got crime throughout the whole community. Now our men are knocking up our women and not marrying them. Now, hey, now we got homosexuals marrying men, marrying men, when women marrying women. Cause why? The pastors told them that they saved by the blood of Jesus, and they don't have to keep none of God's laws. Now God got a problem with that. Most definitely. Well, well, no, but what I'm saying, but keep in mind, that's what you basically are saying. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, you wanted to get some wisdom, you open up this Bible and what? Start reading, right? Read. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments. That don't change. That don't change. For, for you to have a good understanding of this Bible, you have to do the commandments. What is nature? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!